Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is a loop in a graph? We're talking, of course, about loops in graph theory. When we start talking about loops, there are a lot of different in-depth discussions we could start to have, but I'm going to try to keep this lesson as much of a general overview as possible. So with that said, let's get into the lesson. Usually, when we begin studying graph theory, we spend most of our time studying what are sometimes called simple graphs. You're probably familiar with simple graphs. They've got vertices and they've got edges that join pairs of distinct vertices. There are a few things that simple graphs are not allowed to have. For example, in a simple graph, a pair of vertices is either joined by zero edges or one edge. They're not allowed to be joined by more than one edge. Also, in a simple graph, an edge is not allowed to join a vertex to itself. And let's stop there, because this is what's called a loop. So again, a loop also sometimes called a self-loop, is an edge that joins a vertex to itself. And again, loops are not allowed in simple graphs. So if you are using vertices to represent people, and let's say you are using edges to represent friendships between those people, then a simple graph will do just fine. It wouldn't make sense to have multiple edges between the same pair of vertices, and it wouldn't make sense to have an edge joining a vertex to itself, because you can't be friends with yourself. But what if we change things up and use edges to represent people who have the same age? So then if this vertex down here is Alex, and this one over here is Bob, this edge between them means that Alex has the same age as Bob. Now in this case, it would make sense for an edge to join a vertex to itself, because everybody is the same age as themselves. We could, of course, just choose to not include these edges, but again, if we do, these are loops edges that join a vertex to itself. And this is a big part of what math is all about, that curiosity to take something that we previously didn't allow, like loops, then allow it and see what happens. An interesting question to ask now is what is the degree of this vertex? Remember that in simple graphs, we said that the degree of a vertex is the number of vertices it's adjacent to, or the number of edges it's incident to. So you might be tempted to say that the degree of this vertex is 1, because it's only adjacent to itself. But in fact, its degree is 2. You could think of this as being because an edge contacts this vertex two times. If we draw this loop again, you can see the edge contacts the vertex once, and then it comes around and contacts it a second time. So that's one way of justifying this, that the degree is 2. One of the benefits of loops contributing 2 to the degree of a vertex is that it preserves the first theorem of graph theory, which you might remember tells us if we add up the degrees of all of the vertices in a graph, it will be equal to 2 times the number of edges. So just remember that loops contribute 2 to the degree of a vertex. So the degree of this vertex is 2, the degree of this vertex is 4, the degree of this vertex is 3, and the degree of this vertex is 3. Now let me just relabel these two vertices here for the next part. We'll label this one A and this one B. Recall that with simple graphs, we defined edges to be two element subsets of the vertex set. So this is a formal representation of this edge that joins A and B. Now notice that using normal sets like this for a loop could cause some confusion, because the repetition of elements in a set does not matter, so this is just equal to this. Now I've seen a couple of definitions to get around this problem. The first solution is to just embrace it and say that this is what a loop is. It's a one element subset of the vertex set. So if one of these elements of the edge set only has a single vertex in it, you know that represents a loop. The other solution I've seen is to use multisets instead of traditional sets. Multisets are just like normal sets, they're unordered collections of objects, except for the distinction that they count multiplicity. So this is a multiset with two copies of the vertex A, and this is a multiset with one copy of the vertex A. And as multisets, they are not equal. Multisets are also sometimes written like this, with square brackets, in order to distinguish them from normal sets. So this is another way we could define loops as multisets that have one vertex in them with multiplicity 2. It describes an edge that goes from one vertex back to that same vertex. Multiplicity 2 just means there are two copies of the vertex in the multiset. One last thing before we go, we've got some mildly annoying vocab to introduce. 
These are just some different terms you'll see that will sometimes mean different things. Oftentimes, the term graph refers to simple graphs specifically, but sometimes it's used in reference to any type of graph. Sometimes the term multigraph is used to refer to a graph where multiple edges are allowed to exist between pairs of vertices, but loops are not allowed. But sometimes it's used to refer to graphs where multiple edges are allowed and loops are allowed. Pseudographs, in my experience, is usually used to refer to graphs where multiple edges are allowed and where loops are allowed. When I say multiple edges, of course, I mean multiple edges between the same pair of vertices. So these are just terms that aren't always used the same way by every mathematician. Just be aware of that if you're reading something that uses these terms. But that's it for today, so I hope this video helped you understand what loops are. Remember, they're just edges that join a vertex to itself. And remember that they add 2 to the degree of a vertex. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Got the time to